Thank you for the introduction, uh, Art, and for inviting me to be part of this panel. Um, my history, br briefly, is uh, I was born during a very bloody war called, um, sort of famously known as the Battle of Algiers in this country. <laughs> it was a war of independence against the French. Um, my family just barely uh, survived it. And my first recollections as a kid, and then as an artist, because I was always an artist, I was always drawing, were of these, these troubled times. And my first drawings I ever remember making were of Algerian soldiers saluting the banned Algerian flag. This is back in the late 50s. So I guess I was always a politically <laughs> engaged artist. I didn't know how not to be. It was in my DNA. Uh, so art and activism were never really separate for me. It was kind of hard for me to separate the two. My wife often wishes I could do that, kind of do art without doing politics. It would be easier. You're not going against power. You could make maybe a little bit more money that way. But it wasn't meant to be. Um, so art is activism. The two are really very strongly linked for me whether it be in my sculpture, ceramic work, or in the political cartoons for which I'm better known, I've always, so I've always had the two really uh, inseparable. My, the first uh, work I'd like to show you that is about this concept of art as, not just activism, but art as memory, is uh, a picture of a, a sculpture, my first public sculpture, which is in Santa Ana in front of the public library which was honoring a man by the name of Alex Ode, who was an activist, Palestinian-American activist, who was killed at the age of 40, left three little kids and a wife. I knew him well, and it bothered me that it was hardly even mentioned in the Los Angeles Times, let alone the national media. This guy didn't fit the, the, the narrative. He was a Palestinian who was killed by a Jew, an extremist, uh, of course, of the JDL. It didn't fit them at the narrative, so it just got basically ignored. So a few years later, I managed to bring some people from the Arab American community, like Casey Kasem, rest in peace. He died last year. Um, and we, we got the funds together, we got the permits and everything, and we actually managed to honor this man who had almost been forgotten, Alex Oday in the city where he was killed and where he was ignored, pointedly ignored. And now he's standing there in bronze, nine, tall, nine feet tall, uh, where all, this thing, all these things happened. It was important to me and to Casey Kasem and a number of people in the Arab American community that he be honored and he be remembered. Ironically, still every few years, some of the fanatics will throw red paint at the statue, like they didn't kill him enough the first time. And his um, his assassin ended up in in, um, in Israel, where he was safe. But he later got in trouble there too for kill, killed somebody else, and he ended up in prison. Um, so that was my first uh, example of art as memory. Second one is sort of related. It's about the Deir Yassin massacre that happened in 1948 in Palestine as a way to discourage Palestinians from hanging around, from, from staying where they were. The, the Israeli, the future Israelis, the, the terrorists of the Irgun, uh, went around and killed people and made an example of this village of 200 people, killed everybody. And again, the Deir Yassin massacre is something you don't really hear about much in, in our culture, in our news media. It's sort of swept under the rug. It's not something really that's sexy to talk about. So I was um, commissioned by this professor in New York um, at the Smith Colleges in Geneva, New York, to do a little something that would uh, allude to this massacre. And I, I, the first idea I had was to portray this uh, olive tree that's almost completely uprooted, but you'll notice it's still hanging <laughs> by a thread there. It's not completely taken out. And 
It represents the Palestinian people and their struggle to survive, not be forgotten. So now it stands there in front of the, in front of the lake, technically on property owned by this, the university. The university had refused to put this monument on its campus, except that this part of land, which I don't remember the exact technicalities of it, but the professor, his name is Dan McGowan, managed to finesse this thing and put it actually on their property, but in the portion that he controlled somehow that, that became his own, where he put his own house and, uh, and that. so this is actually st sitting on university property, campus property. And uh, the last one was, uh, it's part of a graphic novel that I co-wrote with uh, an Iranian friend of mine, journalist by the name of Amir Sultani, which was published in 2011, made it to the bestseller list on the New York Times, and was translated in 16 languages, including Farsi. It's, it's, it's banned in, in, in Iran, but it's, it exists in Farsi, Arabic, Hebrew, what have you. And uh, part of one page on that book is devoted to this uh, unhappy, uh, uh, unlucky uh, young woman who was shot famously. This one, this one was not swept under the rug, but still we feel she needed to be remembered in the book. Her name was Nida Arasultani. She was shot by government snipers from the roof somewhere, like today is done places like Syria and, and, and completely um, unfair and uh, uh, revolting. So it, not everything happens at the hands of the classic imperialists and colonialists. It also happens, unfortunately, at the hands of local governments, which is something to remember. The populations in those countries often get stuck between a rock and a hard place, between a Saddam and a George Bush between, uh, you know, between the uh, Assad and, and uh, ISIS and uh, what have you. So this was uh, one page where we chose to poetically remember Neda Agha Sultani, who struck the uh, imagination of a lot of people across the world. I, did I do 10 minutes yet? I'm, okay, good. That's all. I just wanted to share with you a few of these uh, things I've done about on, on this theme of uh, artist's memory. Thank you.